James Charles, Andy Signore, Slazo, and now Pro Jared. How long is this going to continue to go on where the internet hate mob attacks people because they're guilty until proven innocent? In this video, we're going to be discussing Pro Jared's situation, but I'm hoping we can all learn from it with a little bit of social psychology. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I try to do is take different topics going on in the YouTube community and try to see what lessons we can pull from them to improve our own mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So yeah, much like many, many other people, I watched Pro Jared's return video yesterday and he cleared up a bunch of stuff and that's what we're going to be talking about today. But anyways, real quick, for those of you who don't know, um, I was a victim of online hate mob insanity as well. So I wrote a book about it called Cancelled Inside YouTube Cancel Culture. And I also discussed the Pro Jared situation, the situation with Holly Conrad and a bunch of other situations that have happened throughout YouTube, like some of the ones I mentioned in the intro, like with Slazo, with James Charles. But anyways, my brand new book, canceled inside YouTube cancel culture. You can get a free copy of the ebook until the end of the month, so you got about three days. So check out the description, check out the pinned comment down below because this stuff needs to stop, all right? So anyways, to get this thing started, like make sure you go check out Pro Jared's video. Um, one of the things that I discuss in my book is the initial accusations that get spread like wildfire, even when you come back and defend yourself and release the truth, there is only a fraction of the people who will see that. So help Pro Jared out and share his video so some of the people who are contaminated by the false accusations in the beginning of this whole thing will get the correct information now. But anyways, I wanna start out by talking about this real quick clip from the intro of Jared's video. And I've already seen a lot of posts from people telling me to move on or that the tea is cold. I'm sorry that this is no longer entertaining for them, but just because they're bored of it doesn't mean that the harassment stopped or that the story is final and over. I am so glad that Jared said this. I am so glad, like, this is something that until you go through it, like you don't get it. And I'm not asking for pity or sympathy or anything like that, but I just hope you, the viewers, you understand like this might all be like fun and games and entertainment for you, you know, drama channels and commentary channels who do these things and like, like perpetuate these narratives. Like there is a real person on the other end of that. So even though you guys or some people might not want to hear Pro Jared's side of the story anymore, like that dude and Holly Conrad are still getting harassed. Like everybody who goes through this has psychological effects that happen to them and it's ongoing. I had somebody yesterday when I was talking about something on Twitter say, oh, when are you just gonna move on? Like, do you really think that on a daily basis I'm not getting harassing comments or even threats? Like it still happens months later. So I'm so glad that Pro Jared talked about this. But anyways, again, make sure you subscribe because this is going to be part of a series, all right? I'm reading a really interesting new book about social psychology and I wanna use the social psychology of witch hunts to kind of talk about different situations that have happened in YouTube, like I mentioned with James Charles, with Andy Signor, with Slazo, and things like that, all right? And this is the first one. So real quick intro of this topic. So there was a social psychologist, famous dude named Emil Durk. Time, all right, and he studied human behavior, all right, and he was a very smart dude. Well, in the 1960s, a guy by the name of James Bergeson wrote an essay called The Durkheimian Theory of Witch Hunts with the Chinese Cultural Revolution, all right? So what's really interesting, before we jump into 
what uh, Bergeson talks about using Durkheim's theories is if any of you have heard of Gustave Le Bon, I've made some videos about him in the past, but Gustave Le Bon, he is famously known for writing a book called The Crowd, and it's all about crowd psychology and mob mentality. So the more you learn about this and you know the crowd psychology and mob mentality and you blend that in with the social psychology of witch hunts, like it's absolutely crazy. So for example, what um, Berkheim talked about is how we humans, he calls us uh, homo duplex, right? We have two different levels. So as individuals, we are very rational, right? We are independent thinkers, we make up our minds, but when we become part of a collective, so much of that just goes out the window and we are insane people and logic just flies out. It's just gone. Where'd logic go? It is no longer there, all right? And that's what happens during these witch hunts. So when um, Bergeson put together his Durkheimian theory of witch hunts, he said it had three main components, all right? The first one is that these things arise extremely quickly and seemingly out of nowhere, all right? Like they escalate, like they go from zero to a hundred like that. Number two, they involve crimes against the collective. So everybody in the collective, in the community, can be affected by this. And lastly, the so-called offender, all right, a lot of this stems from either A, something very trivial, or B, something that's completely fabricated, all right? And there's a fourth thing that we're gonna be talking about, which is that when this happens, people are afraid to defend the person person who was accused, all right? So we're gonna take these four components and relate them to the pro-Jared situation. These arise very quickly and seemingly out of nowhere. I had never even heard of pro-Jared. A lot of you have, he's a pretty big creator, right? But this all started when his ex-wife, Heidi, release all this information about the awful person Jared was when they got a divorce. And also, I forgot to say this in the beginning, but do not go harass Heidi either, all right? Jared has not asked you to do that. You are not, you know, defending him by harassing her. Like, that's something I hope everybody learns about, you know, this whole cancel culture and mob mentality. Like, just going from one, like hating one person to another, it's not getting anything done, all right? I talk about that quite a bit in the book. But anyways, came out of nowhere escalated extremely quick. When this happened with Pro Jared, it was trending on Twitter, all right? So these involve crimes against the collective. So Pro Jared was accused of soliciting nudes from minors, which he cleared up 1000%. But how does this affect the collective? How did the, how did the entire YouTube community turn against him? Well, we've had stories of people like Austin Jones, who was doing this. There's people like um, Romeo, whoever, the tattoo guy, who is doing things like this. And even Jared acknowledges in his return video that there's somewhat of a power imbalance. And that's something I can make a whole different video about, right? But the fear is, is that this can affect the entire community. And is it irrational? Uh, it, that one's a, a difficult one, right? Because there are many people out there, not just YouTube creators, but people who use their position of power to manipulate people who are lower on the, the power dynamic. You know what I mean? But anyways, that's how this whole thing started to escalate because people were saying Jared is doing things that could affect the entire community. Number three, the offenses often stem, stem from something trivial or fabricated. So this is actually both, all right? So fabrication. The accusations against Jared for soliciting news from minors, that was completely fabricated. All right, we now know that. Unless new evidence comes up, at where we're at right now, Jared provided enough evidence to at least give, an, give us reasonable doubt. And something I try to talk about, and I talked about this in my video yesterday about Dave Chappelle, is we need to start looking at the court of public opinion and trying to hold it to a standard of like the actual court of law, all right? Because so many of these things that are happening, people are guilty until proven innocent, and 
are with due process, people are supposed to be innocent until proven guilty, all right? But the trivial aspect, okay? And, and some of you might disagree with me on this, but hear me out. Trivial, this all started from Heidi claiming that Jared cheated on her, okay? So in a personal relationship, that's a huge deal. But 99.9999999% of the people who have been part of the hate mob on either side, it's trivial. You know why? Because you're not in this relationship. What those people do is none of your damn business, all right? It's none of any of our business. So the harassment that this man got, all right, it is over something that literally does not affect you when it comes to the relationship with him and Heidi and him and Holly, all right? Also, something trivial, and I'm glad that Jared kind of stood his ground on this and even his ex-wife Heidi kind of discussed this, like, like they, you know, they have their own sexual things that they like to do and they were, you know, swapping nudes and it was consent between adults or people who said they were adults and lied to them and stuff like that. Like what you do in the privacy of your own home or wherever, like do your thing if it's not hurting anybody. Quit caring so much about other people's sex life, okay? Thanks. So number four, fear of defending the accused. This happens every single time. Like, when you watch Jared's video, he talks about how he tried to distance himself away from his other friends so they weren't being hit with the collateral damage. But the problem when these when these things happen, especially on YouTube, is that people don't wanna to come to, their, uh, to your defense because they'll be attacked by the hate mob as well. Like, that was, one of the most painful things for me, like you you feel completely isolated. Like I had friends who tried to stand up and defend me and they were threatened, they were attacked. Like it was nuts. Like I had people who were just like, hey, Chris isn't that bad of a guy. They were getting threatened with physical violence. All right? So this is one of the issues when the hate mob attacks is like nobody can even defend you because the mob will just go after them as well and say, oh, well, if you're not with us we're against you you know what i mean and that is absolutely brutal i'll tell you this the only time the only time i've ever seen people come to the defense of the accused is when it happened to james gunn the director of guardians of the galaxy and outrage culture just started freaking out but the cast of guardians of the galaxy and many other celebrities were like no this ain't cool and they came to his defense i wish that happened more often. So yeah, those are the four main components of witch hunts. And I hope you now see kind of how this happened to Jared, but I want you to look at a greater whole. So this is going to happen again. We're like, barely over halfway done with 2019 and it's already happened four times this year probably more that i'm not even listening right so the next time this happens and the internet hate mob is piling on someone i want you to step back and ask yourself these things like okay is this turning into something that's escalating too quickly right is it something that we believe it involves uh, harming the collective is this stemming from something trivial or is it even possible that these accusations are false? You see what I mean? Like, start thinking in that way. So the last thing I wanna talk about, here's what really bumps me out. There are so many creators, and Jared talked about this in his video, there are so many creators who helped fan the flames and spread this narrative that was going on about Jared. And I'm telling you this right now, so many of those creators who made videos like that are not going to correct themselves, all right? I believe The Right Opinion um, tweeted out yesterday that he took his video down just because there's new information and props to him on that. But I guarantee you many other creators won't do that because this is what happens every time. But here's the second part of it. If they do, and keep an eye on this, all right? Because I, I kind of like analyze these things. The creators who come back and say, okay, Jared cleared his name about soliciting nudes from minors, what they'll do um, after that, completely based on pride, completely based on ego, in an effort to save face, they're still going to play into the narrative that Jared 
cheated on Heidi with Holly, even though there is evidence that it was a sloppy, polyamorous relationship, all right? And like, that is what's really sad because I'm telling you this right now. Holly Conrad is not gonna get anywhere near the justice that she deserves for being caught up in this entire thing. And this video is longer than I planned, but again, don't go harass Heidi, but it's interesting when you watch Heidi's statements based on Jared's, like Heidi is much more aggressive. All right, and I understand, you know, when you go through a breakup, when you get divorced, there's a lot of pain, there's a lot of hurt and everything like that. But I think that energy is fueling some people to still send hate towards Jared, towards Holly. All right, but anyways, again, this stuff needs to stop and make sure you check out my book. You can get a copy of it for free until the end of the month. My new book is called Canceled, Inside YouTube Cancel Culture, where I take a deep dive and give you kind of a behind the scenes look about how all this stuff happens and and yeah, I will be making more videos breaking down different situations using social psychology and discussing how this happens. All right, but that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to check out the new videos that I'm working on, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And a huge thank you to everybody else who supports the channel in other ways, like by getting merch, uh, you know, buying my books, all that kind of stuff. I love your faces. All right, but anyways, thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.